Louder, hallelujah. The Lord is going to touch somebody in the house today. Heavens are going to open upon your life. For those who have been participating in the fasting and prayer, and those of you who are still participating, we are still going on. By the grace of God, you enter another level in the spiritual things. You become robust in the realm of the spirit. You become a force to be reckoned with. Your life will never be a mere figure but a force. In the name of Jesus. You may be seated. I want to thank God for God's servant. I remember sometime long ago, I don't know whether it's three, four years, I came in here. Just Reverend Hart brought me here. So he's the connector. Hallelujah. He brought me to him in the office and we just had some good time together. And um, since then, on and off. And uh, I thank God he called me a while ago and we started talking. And uh, I'm here today by providence. Hallelujah. So I appreciate God's servant. I thank you very much for the privilege. And I know that the hand of the Lord is upon you. We're going to explode and expand the work in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the Lord will come to perfect what that which concerns your life and ministry in Jesus' name. I salute every one of you that is privileged to be connected with God's servant and with what God is doing here in this commission. You are in the right place. Tell anybody you are in the right place. Doing the right thing. You get the best result. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Remember the Bible says, they that be planted in the house of the Lord, they will do what? They will flourish. I see you flourishing. Be planted here. Amen. By my training, I was trained to be an agriculturist and agronomist. And I'm aware that if you plant a crop and you keep moving it and moving it and moving it, it doesn't get it to do well. You get what I'm talking about? Each time you remove it and, re and transplant it, it substantially it has a setback. Except crops that actually are wired for uh, 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 you do a little bit of nursery for them and then you establish them in the permanent site. And that is once. But if after every three weeks, four weeks, one month, you move them, they are substantially set back. And they can never become their best. They can ne never get the best yield. That's why believers must learn to stay planted where they are. Amen. The only reason for which you may exit a place is because either you are transferred to another nation, another state entirely or city, or by divine sorting. And it will be really divine. And it's not a general rule. It happens an exception. Say amen. So stay here. Tell your neighbor, stay here. Let's grow together. Let's celebrate together. Let's conquer together. Let's succeed together. Let's tell each other story for 10, 15, 20, 30 years together. Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to wed a lady who is a medical doctor very soon. I wedded the father myself in our ministry and the wife, he's a doctor also. Two of three of his children are doing medicine. One is doing, the lady is doing a housemanship right now. Now, when we start talking about how we started, it's sweet. Nobody will enjoy that story with you. You know, there's always a story behind every glory. Is somebody hearing? Hallelujah. So it's quite interesting and quite fine when that happens. So I pray that you will be planted, that we will tell stories of how things have gone. Amen and amen. As a wedding, and the man of God said, young man, I wedded the father and the mother of this girl. They did very well and produced this girl. Now I'm getting you wedded. She didn't get spoiled in our hand. Let her not get spoiled in your hand. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so Father, as I go ahead to share your word, bless us together. Let your word affect our lives for good. Let there be mighty spiritual awakening and divine deposit upon our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. I should do it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Shout it louder. Amen. amen. Come with me quickly to Luke chapter, chapter 4. In Luke chapter 4, verses 1 and 2 and verse 14. Luke chapter 4, verses 1 and 2 and verse 14. And I read, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led 
by the spirit into the wilderness being 40 days tempted of the devil and in those days he did eat nothing and when they were ended he afterward a hunger that he became hungry in verse 14 when everything was concluded the bible says and when and jesus did what returned in the power of the spirit into galilee and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. As you partake in fasting and prayer, this one that is known as subsequent ones, your life will produce news. News means north, east, west, and south. The information keeps going out. The Bible says, as a return from the fasting experience, as a return, the news of him went around the entire region. The entire region. Because he came back, he returned in the power of the Spirit. In the power of the Spirit. Any believer that is not praying is playing. And any believer that is not taking our time regularly to fast is given to suffering and will not have spiritual it will not be robust spiritually it will not be spiritually sensitive is somebody hearing him in the book of Isaiah chapter 40 verses 28 to 30 the Bible says that have you not known have you not heard that this same father gives power to the weak I mean to the weary he said he is never he never tired and that everyone who waits upon the Lord will do what will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run. They will not. And when they walk too, nothing will happen to them. Hallelujah. That will renew their strength. also means exchange their strength. So I mean exchange their strength. I give you just something that will illustrate it a little. If you have a bucket here, 20 liter bucket, and you carry stones like my the size of my fist, like 20 or 15 of them. Each time you drop a stone, if the if the bucket were filled with water to the brim, each time you drop a stone, it displaces equal volume of water. Is somebody hearing me? But that volume of water is not equal in weight with it. Because the density of the stone is higher than water. This is what happens in the realm of the spirit when you wait on the Lord. You exchange your strength. Remember the Bible says that you see, he said the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisest of men. So the weakness of God is stronger than the strongest of men. Hallelujah. This is the truth. So I want to encourage every, every believer to make sure that the issue of prayer and fasting becomes part and parcel of your life. Turn with me to Mark chapter 9. I do selective reading. Mark chapter 9. I do a few selective reading there. Jesus Christ, in one of his mobile ministry uh, assignments, was accosted by a parent. Hallelujah. In verse 17. Verse, I'll read 17 to 18. Then to 25 to 29. Mark chapter 9. 17, 18. And one of the multitude answered and said. Master I have brought unto you my son. Which had a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he takes him. He tears him and he foams and gnashes with his teeth and pines away. And I spoke to your disciples that they should cast him out and they could not. They could not. Then from verse 25. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit saying unto him, 
you dumb and deaf spirit. I charge you, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and ran him so and came out of him. And he was as one dead. In so much that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him and by, by hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind. Hallelujah. This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Amen. Hallelujah. Prayer and fasting going. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. In Daniel chapter 6 verse 10, the Bible told us that when Daniel was in trouble, he continued his habit and practice of praying three times daily. Amen. Three times daily. The Bible says now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his, and his windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before God as he did as before time. Previously. Habitually. That was his practice. Hallelujah. Now Daniel was in trouble. He prayed. When you are in trouble, pray. However, don't wait till you are in trouble before you pray. When you are in trouble, pray fast, but don't wait till you are in trouble before you fast and pray. Amen. You make sure when you are fasting even ahead of time, you are actually strengthening yourself ahead. You are accumulating spiritual energy ahead of time. Because there are issues you will come across in life that there are kind, they are this kind of situation. They will require higher spiritual energy to deal with them. Let me explain a few things. What are the effects or the purposes of fasting? Fasting, first and foremost, is to humble yourself. Second Chronicles chapter 7, from 13 and 14. Second Chronicles. First and foremost, the first purpose of fasting is to humble yourself. If I shut heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locust to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people which are called by my name shall do what? Humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Say amen. amen. When you subdue or subject yourself, One thing fasting does is to bring down self and the flesh. Self and the flesh. The greatest obstacle between you and what you need to lay hold on is self and the flesh. The flesh. Amen. You will humble it. Bring it down. Bring it down. I remember those days when we were on campus, don't tell me how long it goes so that I won't make some people looking anyhow here. Amen. As if I'm a two-sailor. What we do on campus in the executive of the fellowship in planning for the next semester, the executive stayed back and we fast, pray and fast for three days. May issue, may primary or most important and critical decision, we don't attend to it until the third day. No food for three days. The first day we pray, we, ch we, we charge ourselves. Second day we pray, we charge ourselves. Then on the third day, we sit down to discuss and to make plans. By that time, those who will have been argued with the energy of a bar, they no longer have energy for arguing. By that time, the meeting is smooth. Nobody say, I beg to disagree. 
it doesn't happen. They want to break the fast that day. Do you get what I'm talking about? So self is brought down. I'm talking of 79 to 83. Amen. That's from two days now. <laughs> I learned that and I've kept it. And I want to meet with my ministers. We go on fast. The last day is a major decision. <laughs> and by that day, if you were going to argue on the first day, on the third day, you don't have the energy. You'll say, I concur. <laughs> Hallelujah. What others have said, you don't repeat it again another way. Because there's no room for that. You are already subdued. You are subjected. You are one. <laughs> you are broken. <laughs> Is somebody hearing me? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that's the first breakthrough you have. When you wait on the Lord in prayer and fasting. Number two, it generates spiritual power. We've read that in the book of Luke. And you get your strength renewed or exchanged. Remember in the book of Luke chapter 24 verse 49. Luke 24 49. The last part of the last three lines. He said, uh, and you shall be, he said, wait in, this, in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Tari. Everybody say tari. Tari. Tari includes prayer and even fasting. <laughs> tari. They don't even know the day is going to happen. So they are there tarrying, praying, fasting, praying, fasting until the fullness of the day that the Holy Ghost came. And I tell people, the Bible says when the, when the Holy Ghost was, when the time of the Pentecost was fully come. It was not just that the time of Pentecost was fully come, but it went to people who were fully ready. You didn't hear what I'm saying. They were, it, they, it went to the people who were ready. Because they've been tarrying for it. Hallelujah. Otherwise, it will have gone to a beer parlor to just come. <laughs> but like a rushing mighty wind. It didn't miss its target. Look, God bless you, we don't miss you as target. In the name of Jesus. As you follow the instruction in the house, as you discipline yourself and cooperate with the leadership of this commission, and you pray together, you fast together, you keep joining together in the thing of the spirit, by the grace of God, part time, you will get to your place in destiny. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Also, I want to say that Spiritual, I mean, fasting and praying. Fasting also helps to generate anointing, to crush all kinds of obstacles, deal with, remove things off road. Everybody say, generate anointing. Yes, to crush whatever. To crush almost anything. A brother went and fasted for days. I wonder whether it's about seven days or so, but not more than that, about seven days or so prayed and prayed out his heart. And when he came back home, he asked him to make pap for him. Very, very soft type. Almost semi-liquid. And then they put milk, put sugar, put everything. So he went to wash his, brush his mouth. And before he came, a dog came. Kai! When he saw it, he said, Hey, dog, you die! And the dog ran and stretched and died. Why? Because a man who had just come from waiting on the Lord and whose tongue carry power, he didn't mean to kill the dog. But you know, out of that emotional outburst, <laughs> he just said, Hey, dog, you die. How dare you eat my food or contaminate it? Because how would you go and eat <laughs> food that dog has just taken part of it? It doesn't look like it. Amen. He did not mean to kill. But the energy to kill was already on him. Is somebody hearing him? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You don't need to have been a pastor, a brother who, who maintains a relationship with God and who keeps praying. Because prayer is invisible, invincible. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is a mighty force that we must constantly and continuously engage in. 
That's why First Thessalonians chapter chapter five verse seventeen says, "Pray without season, whether season without stopping or without seasonality, whichever of the two you choose." <laughs> Hallelujah! Just make sure you keep praying. Pray when you feel like praying. Pray when you don't feel like praying until you begin to feel like praying. Is somebody hearing me? You can have breakthrough in prayers and to cause breakthrough in several other areas of your life. And Abuja, a pastor came to me, he called me and said, Sir, I need to see you. He got attend to our ministers our network. I need to see you. Things are not working fine. So he came. And when he came, he told me that, Look, a pastor, one of these uh, mainline churches, it's also a gospel church, but nothing is working. I can't feed my children. Things are no longer the way it used to be. But I look at him and the Spirit of God told me to ask him one question. Are you about to do it? He said, yes. Okay. You are going to pray in tongues here now for 90 minutes. Oh, he said, it's difficult. I said, you're going to do it. Remove your phone, remove your wristwatch and keep it away. I'm your timekeeper. Now let's begin. We began. By the time I took him through and he had a breakthrough, I left him. I went doing some other things. When it was 90 minutes plus, I stopped him. I couldn't stop him. <laughs> He had entered a realm of ecstasy. He was already overwhelmed, sweating, soaked. When, he, when I was able to calm him down, I prayed with him. I said, you got it. You go back. And make sure you always pray in tongues for a minimum of one hour, sometimes one and a half, sometimes two hours. He went back. By Sunday when he preached after service, he said, people, remember started coming, sir. What happened? <laughs> Sir, something has happened here. Within two months, he got two cars gift. He will send me those days recharge card, one thousand five, three thousand. <laughs> that is working. I said it will work. Amen. You are baptized with the Holy Ghost. You have additional tool for prayer, and that is your tongue, the tongue that God has given out to you. Tongues. Amen. Tongues. He whoever prays in tongues edifies himself. And Paul said, Thank God I pray in tongues more than you all. Amplified version says, one of the versions, I think Amplified says, I pray in tongues more than all of you put together. <laughs> then I said, This is serious. <laughs> he said, I pray in tongues more than all of you put together. You don't know what to carry. You're a businessman or a businesswoman. Before you go in the morning, Bath yourself with praying and praying in tongues for 60 minutes plus. Go to work. You see things happen that day. You say things are not working. They must work. Why will they not work? No door can be closed against prayer. No obstacle can stand against prayer. That was the secondary school. But when we were in year four, we had a little challenge with my principal. He's a grammarian. And he likes speaking grammar very well. Huge, tall, lanky man. If he enters any, he must bow, he must bow his head to enter any door. He's tall, like these seven footer people. <laughs> with bushy hair, very bushy. So we had this issue over our breakfast and uh, it was quite not pleasant. So he called and immediately we poured all our breakfast on his roof, the roof of his office. Because he said they should serve us without steel, without egg, without anything. He said they will eat it. So we told him that we know that you know you will eat it. We will not eat this one. <laughs> Just fried, fried uh, yam, nothing. So he called an assembly and said, look. <laughs> he said, he who pays the papa dictates the tune. He said, when a force is Moved against an civil force. What happens? Disaster. Now listen to me. <laughs> All those grammar were not even sensible to us because what the military is that give us food that is sensible. That's all. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if there is any demonic hold anywhere, once you have gathered enough spiritual energy and power by prayer and fasting. They will give way. They will do what? Give way. Because at that point, 
a force bigger, stronger, more powerful, of higher magnitude than it is coming against it. It must give way. If they are witches and wizards, they must bow. Even curses, they must bow. Covenants, they must be broken. Yokes, they must be destroyed. Because of the energy, that spiritual power that comes from prayer and fasting. Say amen. So sometimes you say, because of circumstances beyond my control, now I no longer speak such word. You can control circumstances and situations. What made Jesus a mystery to his followers? They eat together, a lot of times they sleep in the same place. And when he was at the back part of the boat, and the boat was being rocked, and water was filling it, and they came and woke him up. He was even sleeping. They couldn't sleep. They woke him and said, Sir, don't you care that we are perishing? Then he looked and said, You wave, be still. You storm, be still. That everything just obeyed him. And they said, ah, what manner of man is this? Because he will always withdraw. Mark 135, he will go and pray. Sometime before daylight, he will go and pray. Sometime all through the night, he will pray. He will pray. I don't know how many times yourself alone have done IVG. Just on your own. Try it one day. Sweet very sweet. You'll find out that you have covered so much of things that needs to be covered in your prayer. And when you have spent enough time to pray, when you are praying and your prayer doesn't carry any energy, immediately you finish the prayer, you don't even remember what you have prayed for. But when you've really prayed, prayer passes through you and changes you. Are you hearing me? When you really pray, it makes you sober. Because praying simply means you are telling God that I cannot do it. You are the one that can do it. It means that you are declaring your statements of dependence, not independence. Pray means that you are depending on him. You are not independent from him. Amen. Prayer generates healing. You remember in James chapter 5. From I think verse 13 downward. The Bible says, if there's any among you that is afflicted, what do you do? He said, call the elders and pray. Hallelujah. Call them and pray. 13 to 16. He said, because they will anoint you with oil and you'll be healed. Amen. And from 17 and 18, you can deal with circumstances. He said, Elias was a man of like passion like us. He prayed that there would be no rain for a space of three and a half years and there was no rain. And again, he came and he prayed. And there was rain. When he says he was a man of like nature, like us, so he can feel sad, he can feel happy. Amen. He used to feel upset. In fact, at the point, he almost had an emotional breakdown. He said, God, kill me. I'm not better than my father's. So he was a man like you and myself, with blood flowing in his veins. Hallelujah. But a man of prayer. A man of prayer. And it got results. Got results. Got results. A brother in this city of Lagos many years ago, a pharmacist, he didn't get a job. Eventually, he was job hunting and, and met a particular pharmaceutical company and told them he wanted employment. And they said, where? We have problem with employing you because we are not doing well. We're having problem. We have a lot of stock. Nobody's buying it. And sometimes they will get expired, you know. <laughs> so... If you think you can do anything about it, he said, just give me the job, they will all be sold. You mean it? He said, okay, go ahead, come on, come in. He, he will come in early in the morning and lay hands on the goods, the packs of goods, pray out his heart. He sold so much that they promoted him. Are you hearing me? Because of him, because of you in an establishment, the company can fail, can refuse to, to go down. Your presence there can make the difference. Your prayer can sustain it. Your prayer can cause a lot of breakthroughs for that establishment. Is somebody here? Hallelujah. I have one of my brothers. What he does is he goes early to work. A lot of brethren are funny. They go late to work. He will go early to work and take charge of the premises before the others come. Are you hearing me? He will stand and make statements, make prophetic declaration 
in the premises and then go to his office. When he's in the office, he will take time to pray. Before others come, he has taken over. So when they come, they simply do his bidding or they make sure things fall in place. Hallelujah. When you come too late, things have gone berserk before you arrive. Is somebody here? Hallelujah. Be in charge. Take control. Take control. You know, there was a riot on campus when I was on campus. And unfortunately, my, my particular hostel was the one that was leading the riot. I said, the hostel, you won't come and guess. Amen. And we have been taught to do something, to take charge. So we will fly our shirts, wear like just something you can put your leg in, and then enter into their midst as if we are also rioting. And we say, peace in the name of Jesus. Malika, oh, While they are shouting, we too are shouting. Are you hearing me? Peace here. Musha, Ali. Everybody say, hey, hey, hey. Well, we are also shouting. Because we know that here, if this thing escalates, it's a great problem for us. Hallelujah. Take authority over the spirit of violence. And spirit of unrest. Right in their midst there. Since all the one we have been doing have not, have not succeeded in stopping them, now we have to enter that place and back and wrestle it out. Is somebody here? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. In your community, you can take charge. Peace must rule. No armed robbery. No evil occurrence. No witchcraft manipulation. No cultic movement in the place. Pray that prayer and then go and sleep. Amen. In faith rest. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Prayer is so powerful that the Bible told us in Revelation 5 verse 8. Now prayer doesn't die. Prayer does not die. The person who prayed the prayer may have died. The prayer is still in existence. Said there was an order. Can we read it together? Prayer, the prayer of the saints. Roman, I'm sorry, Revelation chapter 5, verse 8. It says, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden veils full of what? Others, these others were what? Which are the prayers of the saints on the last days? If you know the value of prayer, that prayer is not transient, that prayer is permanent, that prayer stays. I love that my prayers should, should get its result when I'm alive, but there are some prayers that will get result when you have left. The woman wept and cried and fasted for her son to be born again. Until she died. She prayed for close to 30 years. The boy didn't change. When she died, not quite five years after, the boy got converted. You thought it was under that her prayer softened the ground. Somebody else may have added his prayer, but her own didn't get lost. You didn't get what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. There is a kind of power prayer you, you pray that people will come and confess their, their sins. And evil deeds. Of this prayer with my friend Lauren many years ago that was being prayed. And there was this arm robbery, spirit of arm robbery was getting too frequent in the GRA. And then the whole church was led. Let's pray against arm robbery. Those who are doing it, this is what will happen to them. We after pray, 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 pray. After service, three young men went to the secretary and said, I want to see the pastor. Say, okay, go inside. When it was their turn. As they went inside, stood there. The man of God said, Oh, you welcome, young man. What can I do for you? They said, We are arm robbers. They just prayed against arm robbers now in the church. He said, uh -huh. So, why can I help you? They said, Sir, that's why we are here. That prayer was too hot. We are afraid. <laughs> we are afraid. Four of us carried out a robbery that made news on the NTA here. And one of us died in an accident. So with this prayer now, we don't feel we have a chance. <laughs> How can you help us? <laughs> Are you hearing me? He led them to Christ and got them to do restitution instantly. They said some of the goods we took, we were just about a week, that we have not sold them, air conditioner, what I mean, those days they carry goods like that. He said, they said the money we have spent most of it, we have not finished it. Because their salvation was very dramatic. 
they agreed that they were ready to go and do labor to be paying the man if he agrees for the balance. So he carried them in his car and went to the house of the man. That seems something. <laughs> it was, no, you don't joke with that. And led them in the car and went to the man and said, well, I'm sorry for what happened to you if it's, um, about two weeks or one week ago. I made news. We're sorry for what happened, but I just have the news for you. Um, this is what happened in church today. And the young men who did this havoc, um, they confessed to me and they have repented and they are ready to restitute. Ah, the wife said, ah, they must die. We must die. Then the husband said, please go inside. Go inside. This is issue. Are you the one that located them? <laughs> or is it police? You get what I'm talking about? <laughs> It was not investigative department of see, it was not CIDs that got them. This is church. So we are going to attend to it the way church wants it. <laughs> so he said he has already gone to where they kept the items and packed them in the boot of his car. And so he told them that told the man, the man said it was okay, he's forgiving them. He even forgave them the money, the balance of the money, collected those goods back, and they discipled those boys and they started growing in the Lord through prayers. To me, that's the type of prayer answer I like to hear. Hallelujah. Drunkards, stop drinking through prayer. Say amen. Our presence and our prayer must generate laborers for the work. He said the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest. Now what? Now, fasting to round or fasting enhances your health or healthy living, healthy living. Fasting does what? It has medical purposes by letting you have healthy living. It renews your physical strength and stamina. There's no doubt about it. A lot of you, when you keep eating and eating, you stuff your stomach and your body system with too much. Each time you take time to fast, particularly if you have like three days, four days to seven days, it gets to a point that certain stored off fat in you is reconverted for you to survive. So those ones that will have cluttered your system are burnt off. If you are engaged in eating morning, afternoon, and evening, I can, how can I eat morning, afternoon, and evening? I am eating to live and not living to eat. They do hear that. Tell your neighbor if you believe that is your, your way. I am, live, I am eating to live, that is to be alive. I am not living to eat. You didn't hear what I'm saying. <laughs> so it's to keep me alive that I'm eating. I'm not, eat, I'm not alive to eat. The sheep and goat, that when they wake up in the morning, is the food they eat, they are looking for. If you live in the village environment, they will all kill and go and look for where to eat. They will go on file. For the nearest person's garden is in trouble. <laughs> they will plunder it and come back. And they start regurgitating throughout the whole day. You are eating too much, you will affect your, you will hinder your health. That's the truth. Your health will be affected by too much food. Amen. The reason you flush your toilet two times is because you have eaten too much. The first time, no Greek go. The second, <laughs> you didn't get what I'm talking about. Because the body will expel, you see. <laughs> Now, don't pretend that it doesn't happen to you. Uh, <laughs> it's too much. The stomach says, it is too much. It expels it by fire and by force. <laughs> what you need to keep going is not that robust. It's not a heavy, it's not a mountain. Amen. <laughs> it's not a mountain. As I stand here, I'm permitted to eat maximum of twice a day. The third one is a problem to me. Any growth I make now is negative growth. The one that will still grow are the younger ones. I only need to be fresh and healthy. You didn't get what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's more, you must eat healthy and not eat just anyhow. Number four is what I call the mental enhancement when you fast. You are mentally enhanced. Scientists, medical people can also uh, get to, to this. I didn't know what I was practicing when I was on campus. Any day I have paper by 2 p.m. I don't eat until I write it. Or 3 p.m. I don't know why I was doing that. Until later I understand that. 
When you are hungry, the veins in your head, eh, more blood flows through it. It keeps your brain more alert. When you are overeating and you are buffeting, you are, you are, it's too much. It, it submerges your mental faculty. It, sub, it doesn't allow it to work well. You can't do productive thinking having your stomach is distended and you are suffering from pains. Do you get what I'm talking about? <laughs> you can't do much thinking. <laughs> Amen. So when you learn to fast, you also enhance your mental faculty. Your brain will be more alert. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So you want your brain to work. Stop. You're those children, they're eating too much. You reduce their food. Amen. In those days, they would say, no, it's when you eat remains that they know you are full. Before a child eats, eats remains, it's probably, if to sleep is a problem. The stomach is already in trouble. <laughs> have you seen children crying because the stomach is already over? <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> even not children, even you. Sometimes you are eating and you go back and say, Kai, this is too much. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Why did I? And it becomes a problem to you because you are, it too, your stomach is already distended and you are feeling some pains and discomfort. You feel some discomfort, not constipation. Discomfort of excessive weight in your stomach. 